A cultural phenomenon. Boba. Some may call it bubble tea, tapioca tea, pearl tea, or just milk tea, but whatever you may call it, you've heard the name before. If you live in the Bay Area, then you may find that you can't walk down the street without seeing a boba shop. But what is it, and where did it come from? Boba is a drink from Taiwan that generally consists of two parts, tapioca and milk tea. The famous black pearls at the bottom of the cup are the tapioca balls. They are a sweet and chewy gel-like food made from tapioca starch, a starch extracted from cassava plant roots, along with brown sugar and water. The second half is the milk tea, which is usually a base tea like black or green tea, with milk to create a sweet and creamy drink. These two parts come together to form milk tea, or boba. In the Bay today, it seems no street corners without boba. How and why did this happen? To find out, we had a chance to talk with several owners and managers of various boba shops in the East and South Bay. Boba is kind of becoming a huge trend is because you can go with your friends and just hang out there in that spot. And now, you know, kids in the Bay Area or uh, in probably most of the West Coast and big cities in the U.S., you know, like kids are drinking them, you know, since they were maybe in elementary school. While coffee, you get your drink and just go. Coffee shops are becoming stagnant, but the difference between coffee and boba is that boba is more of an activity with friends. Uh, you see games in, in a lot of boba shops, uh, and it's kind of more of the experience. Especially when experiencing with friends, there's a lot of peer pressure to buy one. Boba places caters more to the youth, the younger generation. When kids get out of school, usually boba places that are close to schools, so you'll see a, a number of kids who would go in to chill and relax and enjoy boba at the store. Especially around here at Logan, you get to see all your classmates and friends over at these places. We, we definitely stay way more than an hour. We, we probably stay here um, probably when until it closes. So we come here like a, an hour or two beforehand and then we stay, we play games, we talk. Before the boba goes in the milk tea, it has to be cooked separately. It is boiled in water along with brown sugar. The water gives it the texture while sugar gives it the flavor. And then it simmers for 30 minutes. And that's just one half of the process. The other secret is in the stippling, how you cook the tea. Every single boba shop has a unique formula or recipe to make their drinks. So the taste of every drink is different. Each of our drinks are customized, so we ask the customer how sweet they want it and you know if they want it with more or less ice. Boba is also a science experiment as well. Choose your grams of tea, uh, how much water output, how much ice you have to put in, the cooling time, there's a lot of factors and there has to be a perfect consistency of the texture, there has to be no hard bits right in the middle, you know what I mean? Every single shop, even in franchises, might be slightly different, but the franchises can keep their products more consistent. Each drink is created fresh, so uh, we make the drinks however you like them. The boba shops have 200 plus menus, so with that much drink choices to choose from, there's bound to be one for everyone. And that's the difference between coffee and the boba industry. Most boba shops sell some form of food or snack, especially the staple Taiwanese street food, popcorn chicken. A good combo with boba tea due to its fast and easy cooking time and high profit margin. Honestly, like after years of you know drinking it, I'm tired of boba, I'm tired of drinking the drink, so I normally just get the food. Boba is loved for its flexibility and deliciously unique flavors. Boba has always been a part of my life ever since I was a kid. You know, my family grew up with tap. I had it about four or five times a week. <laughs> Lately, it's been like eight cups per week. It's only Friday, and I, uh, I had eight large cups. But all good things come at a cost. People get easily addicted to this stuff, and it also kind of ruins people's bank account. Boba is infamous for having a high sugar and calorie content. My mom gets mad at me, like all the time. She's like, man, you gotta stop drinking boba so often. It's so, the sugar is not good for you. It's too sweet, you know. I don't know how you do it. It's a lot of money. I'm like, yeah, but I like it. It's good, you know. 
The average size cup of boba has 500 calories with about 40 to 80 grams of sugar. A little too much of anything is unhealthy. It's like the same way people are addicted to Starbucks. I gotta get coffee every day. You know, I gotta get my boba drink every day. It's like, it's kind of like that. During the process of this doc, we found out that our friend Greg has never had boba before. Besides my friends, like, I just saw people drinking it and just got curious on my own, you know? Cause I mean, it looks weird. It's got a bunch of black balls in it and you're just like, huh? We decided to be Greg's guides to his first boba experience, taking him to Green Bubble in Union City, California. After thinking about his order for quite some time, he finally settled on getting Thai milk tea. With boba, of course. Pure concentrated sugar just injected into you, right, like all at once. My brain still hurts from, from all that sugar. I always wondered what the balls tasted like, or even if you could drink the balls. It's really like chewy, like squishy, and it got stuck. I probably would get it without those things next time, probably. Yeah. Not only did we get Thai milk tea with boba from Green Bubble, but we went just down the way at the plaza to Cafe Inn, where we got honeydew milk tea this time with half the ice and half the sugar to see if he'd like that. I mean, personally for me, the super sweet one wasn't really my thing. The other one, the green one, oh yeah, that, that, it's pretty good. Lots of stuff right there, that's the good stuff. A lot of people still don't know what boba is. It only seems saturated because you're in California, the boba capital of America so far. Boba places are more popular in areas where there's majority of Asians that live in that area. So the same as with us here in the Bay Area, it's similar to New York and Chicago because there's a lot of Asians over there. And as that moves forward, I think it gets more popular with the rest of the people in, in the USA. So I think it's wonderful because we introduced the, the drinks to kids first and now we're bringing them to different you know, age groups and different ethnic backgrounds and people because it's like something sweet, a lot of people like uh, sweets and uh, we can kind of introduce the culture behind it as well. Imagine if you had to go all the way to Taiwan to try stuff like this, man. Like, I mean, I drove 10 minutes to get here to try something that's like from a different culture. I like that. I like it a lot, honestly. Um, I'm definitely afraid that boba is spreading too quickly, so there are like too many shops going to pop up, and then you're like, oh, I don't know which one to go to, so some businesses have to die down, of course. The future of boba is uncertain. It may rise to the ranks of Starbucks, or fall to the wayside like any other New Age fad. But one thing is for certain. It is a runaway success. But will you be along for the ride?